was that a mistake? Hello everybody, how are you? Thank you so much for hanging out with me today on this beautiful Sunday morning. Well, for me it's Sunday. I, I don't know when you'll see this, but maybe it'll be a Sunday depending upon how quickly I get this uh, edited. Somehow my, my intros just, just never go smoothly. They always just go off on tangents, like trying to keep kittens from electrocuting themselves. Tuxedo. Anyway, oh my, oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. I am hoping that you are all well and that you're having a fantastic day. I figured, you know, I'm going to the laundromat. Why not go with a full face of makeup? Because, um, well, just why not? So I have gotten a bunch of new products, I mean, as I do every month, but a lot of them were very interesting this month. I'm going to have to decide on the palette because I did get three palettes between uh, the two boxes, but I thought this would be fun to try out some things. I know some of you were curious about some of them. Let's find out together. I'm also testing out, well, not testing out, continuing to work with the new mirror that I got in my mystery bag from Fab Fit Fun. From Fab Fit Fun? Wow. Fab fit fun. One thing I did want to mention is there is a power switch back here. An important thing to note is you must turn this switch off after you're done or else it will drain the batteries even if the light is not on. I discovered that because my batteries were dead already. So it is a touch screen that does dim. Thank you very much to the person who let me know that it dimmed. You're a wonderful human being. But I forgot to turn the power off. So you know, something I just wanted to throw out there in case you were interested in getting the mirror. I'm going to try it out today, see how it works for doing my makeup out here in the filming space. I do have my backup mirror here. Again, long intro. You know how it is with me. So let me just let me just shut up now and we're just going to get started. I'm going to wear my black cat ears because it is almost Halloween. I am not doing my regular skincare routine because I do have a couple of products that I want to try out that I got in my box and one that was sent to me for review from a company called Mix Easy. We'll get into that. I'm just going to spray my face with a little bit of extra hydration because I'm not doing my whole skincare routine. I just use the In Beauty Project Power Up Spray. I like the product. I hate the sprayer on it. It goes everywhere. I have to transfer it into another bottle. So. I received a little baby thing of the Pharmacy Daily Greens Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer. I can't believe that I read that without my glasses. I really like Pharmacy products. I've enjoyed most of them. From the products that I've tried and looked into, they do have good ingredients. I'm just going to rip the box because um, I'm savage today. Even the sample comes in a nice glass jar, which I do like. Some of the highlighted ingredients are Moringa, which is basically an antioxidant. Also has the papaya enzymes, which I love what papaya does for my skin. Some people find it um, irritating or if you're allergic to it. It's a lightweight gel. This will probably be much better for me in the summer. It does have a light scent. It almost smells a little floral to me. I never go by my nose completely because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It did absorb very nicely. I don't know if it's moisturizing enough for my skin, but for right now, my skin feels very uh, nice and it does feel hydrated. I most definitely want to play with this eye cream that I just received in my BoxyCharm. I had also received it in another box and I haven't discovered which one it was, but this is the Symbiosis Tightening and Resplendent Eye Mask. I went over some of the ingredients. It does have hyaluronic acid, which is of course going to pull moisture into your skin. That is also why I like to spray my face before and after with some type of water or facial moisturizing spray. So the hyaluronic acid has something to work with. And then the pololin, which I did not know about. I've never declared upon knowing everything. I am, remember, neither a cosmetic chemist or have anything to do with the professional side. I'm just a person who loves to investigate ingredients, what they do, and it's just a hobby of mine. So, from what I learned about this, that ingredient is also safe in foods. You will find it as a thickening agent in foods. But as far as the cosmetic aspect, it can work as a thickening agent in cosmetics, but it also, the pololin, is supposed to pull the skin tight and taut to give a temporary 
tightening to the skin, which is something that you do want in an eye cream. But I also noticed that it may have some lasting benefits too because the rest of the ingredients are promising and many of them are known to add hydration and have some anti-aging effects. So I found it very interesting. What I didn't find interesting was the $93 price tag. Now what somebody did tell me, again, forgive that I don't remember who tells me what, my brain just doesn't uh, remember things. This was for sale for I think $6 in the pop-up sale. So what does that tell you about the actual cost of these products? That's a whole other video in itself, but it thought it bared mentioning. Now, I want to see if this is going to be moisturizing enough. Do I have to add another eye cream with it, etc.? Now it says to just apply a thin layer to clean dry skin, which I do have. It is just a cream consistency and it's white. Ignore my nails, they look like caca. Now with this, I'm just pulling it up. That's what I do anyway with my creams, but I want to see how this works. I'm only going to do the one eye and we're going to see if there's a difference. It says to just let it sit and dry, so let's take a look. Let me pull you in just a little bit. But I'm looking in the mirror, the lighted one, and to me it seems like this darkness diminished ever so slightly on this eye as compared to this eye. I have naturally dark circles. I've had them since I was a child. I don't know, that's my initial reaction. You have to let me know if you notice anything. Now it does feel slightly moisturized, I don't know if that's going to be enough for me under my makeup, but we shall see. Hopefully I will look halfway decent because I do have to go out. The other thing that I am trying, I've been testing it for about a week and a half, using this solely on top of this under eye serum that I do use so that I can get a true reaction to how it's going to perform. This is from Mix Easy. This was sent to me along with a mask in exchange for a review, so I have to try skincare products for quite some time before I can give an actual review on them. The cool thing about this is they call it Mix Easy because you get to choose the main ingredients that you want in the product. I'm going to put it in a video and I'm going to give you a little bit more explanation as to how that works and how this works. This is a gel formula. For me personally, I prefer especially in an eye cream, a little bit more of a creamy formula. Okay, I can tell you that this is definitely not moisturizing enough for me, so I am gonna add this onto it because I do need to go out today. I have two primers that I wanted to uh, go over with you today. I bought this Natasha Denona lifting primer quite a while back, but I never talked about it. It was when she was having a really big sale and I was able to get some of her palettes at ridiculously inexpensive prices. I kind of forgot that I had it, so I've just started using it again. The packaging is absolutely bougie as her products are. At least she gets an A-plus for that. The cap that she has over to prevent um, you from depressing this so you waste any product is also really nice. It's a silicone-based primer, but it also has some decent ingredients for anti-aging effects. It's very liquidy, and it has a bit of pearlescence to it. I happen to like the scent. There is a bit of tack left over, which I do like. And of course, I'm going to try the Clarins primer, which, as I stated in my other video, I am almost done with. And I'm so happy to have a new one and not have to go out and purchase it because I was going to do that. This primer is very much like the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer in that it not only will minimize the pores that you have because it fills them in, but it also fills in your wrinkles. I mean, granted, you don't look like you had a facelift, but it really does a nice job. Personally, I think Clarins is rather underrated. They're not spoken about on YouTube, and they've been around forever, and they do have some really nice products. They're not inexpensive, but hey, you know, when they make good stuff, there you go. Now, the fun thing that I cannot wait to try again, because I have tried it once, is the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. I wore it just the other day. It was very quick and easy to apply. I haven't tried it enough to have a full opinion, but I want to hear yours. It's very liquidy, and I do have to shake it every time I go to put more on. Start with three drops, and it is extremely liquidy, so keep your fingers together. I've never worn it with these primers before, so... Keep that in mind. It 
really does feel like a dry oil. I think the color that I chose works really well. Now, as you can see, it doesn't offer much coverage. I haven't tried using a sponge to see if I can build up anything. Maybe I'll try that. Oh, you know what? Let me try building it up with a brush and see if that works. I cannot remember. I think this is Moda, but I'm not sure, but it's the flat uh, foundation brush. I'm just gonna put it directly under here and it really sinks in big time. I can tell you that in my opinion, I really don't think it is buildable. I don't think that is the purpose of this. I think it's just meant to be a quick wash of color and to blur a little bit of imperfections. But if you don't like using your fingers, it did apply really well with the brush, so that's a good thing. And luckily we did receive a concealer, which is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue. <laughs> I have mine in the color 11, which is light medium, and when I put it on my hand, it looked like it was going to be a very good color. It does have that large doe foot applicator. So I did not have a new bronzer, which is shocking, I know, and I used both my Catrice Prime and Fine, which is a really nice contour color, and then I decided to use my Tarte Tartist Pro Glow palette, which I absolutely love, but I did a boo-boo. I did a bad thingy. I, for some reason, decided to put the cream product on top of the powder. Boy, was that a mistake, and it completely uh, messed up over here. I tried my best to fix it by putting this on top of it. It still looks kind of like poopies, but um, as I said, I'm putting a mask on, so it's not that big of a deal. It's just annoying when I do stuff like that. Now, I did get three palettes. This is the Lovecraft Beauty palette. got the Beauty Bakery Breakfast in Bed palette, and then I got the Illuminati X... Isabel Bedoya palette and I really wasn't sure which one I wanted to use whichever ones I don't use I'll either do a separate look or I'm just going to put them in you know a review video so this is the color story on this one it's interesting I said because this whole thing down here the whole pastel is not thrilling me I am more interested in these two rows up here the Beauty Bakery palette is a very cool toned palette I'm curious about this because it didn't perform as well as far as the swatches as I thought it might. And then of course the Lovecraft Beauty palette, which I thought was really interesting. And these seem to swatch and perform well on my hand at least beautifully. I think I am going to use this today because it seemed that the reviews on this were quite mixed. So I would like to come up with and formulate my own opinion. So I think we'll go with this one. I did receive a set of Luxie brushes in my BoxyCharm box, so I'm going to be utilizing those. And then, of course, I just have my cup of mixed brushes here, some from Morphe, uh, some from Lorella Cosmetics. And, of course, I'm just going to be utilizing my color switch from Veramona today. This does have a very pigmented white, which I think would go really well when you're using the pastels. I'm not going to use the pastels today. I'm going to go into this color called Addy. Alright, that went on kind of nicely for the first little shot there. I'm going to take the more precise brush and I'm going to go into Rose. So the reason I have to go to the laundromat today is because, well, one, my house only has a 110 voltage. <laughs> Where most modern houses, remember my house is from the early to mid 1800s. Most modern houses have a 220 line, which means they can run their washer and dryer at the same time. I cannot. I have to do one at a time, which means it takes me a very long time to do laundry, which I mean, normally I don't mind. I'm, you know, grateful that I have a washer and dryer uh, in my house, which is wherever I go next, whether it be a condo or a townhouse or whatever, must absolutely have a washer and dryer um, in the unit or the house or whatever. So as I'm cleaning stuff out to sell and I'm I'm going through my mom's things and everything. She had tons and tons of sheets for my parents' bed and blankets that were like in the top of the closet. And there's nothing wrong with them, but they've been sitting up there for who knows how long. And before I use them and or give them away to donate or whatever, I want to wash them. But a lot of the larger things won't fit because I have a top loader machine and also it would I mean I have so many bags of laundry it's an absurdity so going to a laundromat and utilizing that time to do it all at once 
and for the larger machines for the bigger things is a much better idea. So I don't know, were people complaining about the pigmentation of this palette or the color story? I do agree that the color story is, is a little unusual and not necessarily cohesive, except that each row will go together. But as far as the pigmentation and the blendability, I think it's going on beautifully. First, I'm going to run this baby girl, it's actually BB girl, uh, on the bottom lower lash line. With the other end, I want to go back into that Addy and uh, add a little bit more of that orangey color on top because the rose kind of took some of that away. I mean, I'm telling you, so far I don't have any issues with the palette. Maybe that's because I haven't gotten into the other colors. Let's try using this June 1st. I'm first going to apply it June 1st, first, uh, with my finger and see how it goes on the lid. That went on fairly nicely, and that's an absolutely stunning fall color, I think. I'm now going to take the flat shader that I got from Luxie, and, okay, it's hard to pick up on a brush a little bit. You kind of have to really tap it in. And I'm going to go on the other side. Okay, this shadow doesn't like a brush very much. Of course, you can always wet it and all those things, but look at the difference between my finger and the brush. A lot of people don't like to wet their shadows, and I don't, I don't blame them. I will try to build it up again. It is buildable, but it doesn't give you the impact that using your finger does. I mean, because look, right away, you get that foiled color. I want to try this black shadow because it's swatched so beautifully. It's called Soul. I'm using a Lorella Cosmetics brush, very stiff brush. And I just want to add a little bit for some depth over here in the corner. Yeah, as I suspected, this black is beautiful. Oh, that totally took this from really monochrome to really dramatic. I absolutely love it. I do want to add some more of this color back in though, but I'm going to use the brush this time because I don't want it to be hello. That intense. I just want to, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Using this Morphe, which I can't read the number. This is one of my favorite inner corner brushes. And I'm going to go into the gold color called Rich. Hey, again, it's a color that is not liking <laughs> adhering to a brush, but I can't use my finger, really, because it's my inner corner. I tried a little bit. I just have to be really careful. Okay, so as we have learned, these are shadows that do not like certain brushes. For some reason, I'm tempted to run this white a little bit on my brow bone. I'm using a very, very fluffy brush, though. That added some brightness without really uh, adding any glitter. It just kind of lit it up a little bit. You know, now that I'm looking in my under eyes, a lot of darkness is peeking through. I'm going to have to keep playing with that concealer and see how, you know, I really like it. What I just did for just whatever is I just tapped into this Purple Dream a little bit on my finger, and I went right in the center of my eyelid. I'm going to stop right there with the eyes. I have a couple of eyeliners to try out. I did get the two Pixie eyeliners, but they're bronzy, and I don't know. Maybe I'll use that on my bottom waterline, actually. Yeah. And then I have my Marc Jacobs liners, my Marc Jacobs liner, I should say. And this is the Clinique Quick Liner for Eyes in, um, what is it, black or something? Really black. And then the Marc Jacobs, oh, this is the wrong color. This one's purple. I gotta go get my other one. Where is it? First, I'm gonna put this bronzy color on my bottom waterline. I will put the names of them all down below because you know I can't see them right now. The Pixie liners are really beautiful for the waterline because they're creamy, they don't tug, they're not uncomfortable, and for the most part, for at least me, they do stay put. Okay, so I have the Marc Jacobs. What are you? 
for goodness sakes I can't read it it was the one that I was so shocked was a liquid liner I didn't expect it at all so we're gonna try this one I just love this packaging I can't talk while I do this Okay, so let me tell you, uh, this is a very, very wet eyeliner. It's very black, and because it's so liquidy, it is so easy to make a boo-boo, which I actually did on both eyes. It's a very precise tip, which is wonderful, but I wasn't prepared for it to be so fluid, and it made the flick on my wing in a place that I didn't want it. I had to be super, super careful with it if I'm going to do any type of a flick because of my hooded eyes and the way it works. Now on this eye, I went to draw a thin line and I went above my hand slip, so I got a thick. But what I will tell you is, if you just want a very fine line close to your lash line, this is it because it's so precise and it, you do have to shake it often, by the way. Get very close to your inner corner. That for me, it's it's just a user error because I have a hard time shaking hands. You, you know the whole deal. But I really like this. And for what I paid for it, freaking amazing. I'd never gotten a chance to use this e.l.f. blush that I picked up for my full face of e.l.f. And I wanted to give it a shot. It is very orangey. So I think it might go. We got this SLM Miss Glam brush, which I absolutely love her brushes. The aesthetic is absolutely stunning. It's a little small for me for a blush brush, but we're gonna try. And this blush is way hecka pigmented, so I'm gonna do tappies. You know, actually, it works quite well, especially with a very pigmented blush. So I have to tell you a little bit of history. When I first got divorced, I basically moved from place to place probably once a year. I think the longest I was ever anywhere was maybe 13 months, and I moved, let's see, since I got divorced, I'd say from 2007 to 2014, I moved seven times, seven times, once a year, and I hate moving. Moving is the most stressful, exhausting, mentally distressing thing you can do. I've been here for six going on seven years. I've gotten very comfortable. This is really pretty, by the way. As I said, it's so pigmented, though, that uh, I have to buff it out just a little bit. Can't beat e.l.f. products, man, for the price. Oh, you know what I didn't do yet? I didn't do my top waterline. I'm going to use the Clinique Quick Liner uh, for that. This is also wonderful. Love this liner. Always have. By the way, the Marc Jacobs is a shiny liner, just in case you wanted to know that. So moving the house that I grew up in, that I still had stuff in, even when I first got married, I left, you know, the attic is full of my stuff, etc. This is the Precisely My Brow from Benefit in 3.5. So not only do I have to go through my old stuff, but of course now going through everything else and trying to get rid of basically 50 years worth of stuff because it all cannot come with me, us, to the new place. And I am having a hard time. I've mentioned this before, but, you know, I didn't grow up with money. Having the newest things, I actually grew up with not ever the newest and best things. Everything we had, if it broke, my dad fixed it. We didn't just go out and buy a new one. I never felt neglected or anything, but that, that was just the atmosphere and that I grew up in. And it taught me some very good things about the value of things. But I have to say, it kind of switched on me a little bit as I got older and I started to work and I was able to have my own things. I went maybe sometimes a little bit overboard. But what I noticed is I have a hard time getting rid of things because I'm like, well, maybe I'll need that. Or I spent my money on it, so I don't want to get rid of it because I know the value of having things. Plus right now, you know, getting rid of things is also like getting rid of memories. I have a lot of memories attached to things and I'm very emotional and empathetic that way. And that could also be very detrimental to decluttering. So while I'm doing my best, I can definitely say that I am struggling. And I do welcome any tips or advice that you guys have. 
because honestly the place that I go into I want to be comfortable and have a place for everything and not feel overwhelmed I mean, I did really well with a lot of things when I was going through uh, the, the different rooms. I mean, I donated eight bags of clothes. That's a lot. I mean, I'm not talking about small bags. I'm talking about contractor bags of clothes. I mean, I don't have a lot now either. Certainly different than when I was growing up, but I certainly don't live luxurious lifestyle. I live an average middle-class American's lifestyle. Granted, I do have a lot more makeup than most, but I also need tax deductions for the little that I make here on my channel. I have to say I've always loved Benefit brow products. I've done them for a long time and they do them very well. I have a couple of highlighters that I do want to try. Of course, I got the Fenty, which in, in the outrageous colors. Of course, I will list them for you. I most definitely will be using these as eyeshadows, no doubt, at least the purple. But I do want to try just a little bit of the pink on, just to say that I tried it as a highlighter, you know. I'm going to use the Persona Cosmetics brush that I received. Again, it always reminded me a little bit of the KKW. This is supposedly a blush brush. I haven't even tried this yet. And this is the highlighter brush. Let's see how it works as a highlighter. They are very, very pigmented. And as you can see, that's very, very pink, which is why I'm going super, super lightly. I wasn't sure I would like this as a highlighter brush, but I actually do. Believe it or not, that is all I am going to do of this. Let me swatch these again for you, just so you can see how beautiful they are. They're both stunning. But I also got an Essence highlighter, which I have never tried. This was a sample. I think I got this in my baby Ipsy bag. This one will probably go a lot better. It is a goldish color. There you go. I just used my color switch because I still want to try this. I've heard good things about Essence highlighters and we know that they are as reasonable as uh, reasonable can get. I should use my lip plumping thing on my lips. I love that little thing. It's a very pretty highlighter. I can see myself using it all the time if I can grab for it because I have so many highlighters. As far as lip products, I did receive quite a lot of them. I don't think I even have all of them here, but I have the Marc Jacobs, that really cool metallic-y gloss that's kind of multi chromey which is gorgeous. I have the Laura Geller 50 Kisses in the color beige something. I'll put that on there. That's a nice orangey color, and I think that will go quite well with the look. And then I have the Violet Voss, also a orangey color. Oh, very fall, and that's a gloss too. So, you know what? Let's go with... Oh, I have a lip liner too. This is from Ace Boutte. It was a lip liner duo that I received. This is very... I don't know. This is nudish. Let's see what happens. This is really nice. It's creamy. It goes on smoothly. It has a slightly metallic finish, which is unexpected. And I think if I wanted to just wear this by itself, I definitely could. But let's try the Laura Geller first. All right, it doesn't necessarily go well with the lip liner. But I'm taking this off before I uh, leave the house anyway, so. I'm six, I'm such a mess today. The lights kept going out. When things go wrong, they go wrong. But anyway, I really do like this color. And I love the way this color goes with the look I'm wearing. And I really do love the color a lot, especially for fall. But I do want to put some of the Violet Voss Gloss. Violet Voss Gloss. Yeah, I want to put that on top. I mean, the color's almost identical. It's like they were made to go together. I will most definitely have lipstick on my teeth before I end this video. <laughs> While it's kind of drying down, I got a sample of the Huda Beauty, the Major Volume Curl, an insane length. Not, not just length, but insane length. Mascara. In an interesting little trial size thingy. And, uh, you know, why, why not? It was a very small brush. It sounded like when I took it out that it was a plastic bristle brush. Oh, it has a little bit of a curve to it. Here, hold on. See a little baby curve? Let's see what happens. I'm not going to put primer on because I want to see how this performs on its own. You really kind of have to, like, 
get it in there and pull it through. Now, it might get a little bit clumpy as it did on my ends here that I'm going to have to go in with a brush and brush that out. But, uh, hmm, it did lengthen them quite significantly. You know, it's not the kind of mascara that you can just, like, brush on. You kind of have to really get it in there. Ignore the mascara face. Don't we all have a mascara face that we just love? Okay, it's totally clumping up on me, and the more I try to unclump it, does it more. I'm going to have to try this again, maybe with the primer, uh, definitely having to brush it out. If you guys have tried this, please let me know what you think, because I'm, I'm very curious about it. But, you know, I'm just going to throw a little bit of this Marc Jacobs gloss in the center, because, as I said, it's coming off anyway. I've been filming for two hours. Yay me. So let's quickly go over just a couple of things. I'm going to give a more detailed thoughts on all of these products at a later date because some of them were first impressions without a doubt. You know I love this puppy, the Clarins. I was very surprised by this brush, to be honest with you. Uh, if it wasn't dual-ended, I would probably use it much more. I want to try an Essence highlighter, so I'm probably going to go out and buy one after I, after I finish this. Yeah, all right. This palette I cannot give a real review on. I do love the look that I came up with, but there are too many other things to try in here for me to say it's a fabulous palette. I have to give these pastels a go, even though they're not the look that I go for. I still want you to know how they're going to perform, so I'm going to try this some more during this week and let you know again in a later time. But if you guys have tried it, I want to know what you think. This foundation, I think I'm going to enjoy, especially when I just want some nice light coverage. I mean, the dry down is beautiful. It doesn't feel like an oil slick. If you have oily skin, I don't know how you're going to feel about it. And if you do and if you've tried it, what do you think about it? I'm very curious. The concealer as of right now is definitely fairly natural looking. I will definitely use it. I may layer it up with some others to get a little bit more of the effect that I'm looking for, but I'm really glad that I got it. The Kilowatt Highlighter, you know that I love them for lots of different things. And I have to keep playing with this. It felt a little strange going on, almost slightly gritty, but that really dissipated and it didn't affect the makeup going on top of it whatsoever. So I'm going to play with this. This is a very expensive primer, by the way. I would not have purchased it if it wasn't for the amazing sale that she had. But if you guys have tried this, I'll be curious to know your thoughts. As far as this puppy, the symbiosis, I, I don't know. I thought that I saw a little bit of diminishing of the darkness as far as this eye went because this is the only eye that I put it on. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on whether you saw anything, maybe with continued use, but it didn't give me an eye lift. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to keep trying it and uh, we'll see. I know I didn't go over everything, but I will, of course, give you further reviews on them at a later point. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know that this was a long video. I'm going to try to edit it down to a reasonable amount of time. No promises there. If you did stick through to the end of this video, I appreciate you so much. You are amazing, wonderful people. I love you all tremendously. I would love it and appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either one is okay with me. And of course, whatever part of the world you're in on around, I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week coming up. I'll see you really soon. I have a few more of these to film, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Love you guys. Bye.